What's up guys, it's Colton Smith, and today we're back with our second video tutorial. In this video, we're going to build a basic cross-section momentum strategy that's rebalanced weekly. To do that, we're going to use Alphavanna JPI to pull free price data for a small basket of securities. Uh, we're going to generate a signal data frame, which in this case could be momentum, uh, or it could be sentiment, it could be macro indicators and whatnot, but this is going to be what we're going to rank the securities at each week, and then we're going to calculate the returns for a given portfolio that we can construct. And so this is kind of just a quick building blocks uh, for testing out ideas. And so I thought that would be a good place to start. Uh, so this code to get the Alpha Vantage price data is from a previous project that I did on dynamic load decomposition. So you can go check it out there. But basically what we're going to do is loop through each of the securities that we're interested in. That's going to represent our universe. And we're going to grab the weekly adjusted prices and uh, the adjusted close column. Uh, is the one we're going to use to calculate returns. So we're going to grab that, put it all into a data frame uh, that has all of our securities together. And so this is almost done. And we'll make sure that there's no glaring data quality issues, there's no gaps in the data, everything looks good there. And this is what our data frame looks like. So Alpha Vantage is great in the sense that uh, you, I was able to just grab the weekly, so I don't have to actually find the last trading day of each week or the first trading day to create this time series. I can just call the function, throw it together, and now I have a price data to work with. Uh, so there is a limit to the amount that you, amount of calls you can make, so that's why I'm working with a pretty small universe here, but you could do this for uh, different asset classes as well as huge universe, and which is what people do in practice. So no real constraint to that on this. Um, and then our next step is we want to actually create the returns that correspond to this. So if we're going to end up calculating uh, the returns of a portfolio, we're going to need the individual returns of each of these securities uh, across this time series. So we're going to create a new data frame, which is going to be first just a copy of the price data. And so it's nice to keep the original price data frame so you can verify that uh, everything's aligning correctly, that there's no calculation issues, and because if there's any issue errors in the calculation of returns, the rest of your analysis is going to be void. And so a function that we're going to use a couple of times here is the apply function. So what the apply function does is it takes another function, uh, which you can write as a lambda function in here, and applies it to each of the rows or each of the columns of a data frame. And this is really handy um, when working with data frames because oftentimes you're going to have these cases where we have a you know securities across the top and we want to apply something to each of the individual columns. So to write that, We're just going to write the return formula there. So we're going to look at the, the next uh, price data divided by the current price, minus 1. And we're going to apply that across the 0 axis, which is columns. All right, let's take a look at that. So something I like to do is just quickly spot check uh, one of the values because, like I said, this is very important to make sure that your returns are being calculated correctly or the rest of the results are going to be meaningless. All right, so in this case, the return here should be the return from January 24th to January from January 17th. So we can quickly check that. Great, things look like they're being calculated correctly. So next, we're going to create our signal data frame. And so our case, we're going to use momentum, but as I mentioned, you could do this for anything. Uh, anything that you want to rank your securities by, uh, you could write this formula for. So we're going to create the momentum data frame, which is also going to just start out as a price data frame. And similar to the returns, we're going to do the uh, the return of the security for the last six weeks prior to the week that we're going to be trading. And so what that's going to look like here is a similar apply function just with different shifts. So uh, this is going to be the previous week and then this is going to be seven weeks prior. So it is going to look at those six, the return between those, which would be a total of six weeks. 
And the reason we have a, a gap on not using the current week is because uh, first, the traditional momentum does have this as there could be a short term reversal in the longer term trend. And secondly, it, it's more consistent for actual execution because if you uh, received a signal on the close and wanted to execute on the close, you wouldn't be able to do that. So this gives some time uh, for execution, but it really doesn't make too much of a difference uh, in our case. Okay, so now we have a momentum data frame, which is going to be our signal. So this uh, return should be the return from 117 to 228. So let's also just double check this one. Okay, uh, looks like it's calculated correctly. Sweet, so now we have the momentum data frame and then we have our returns. So now we need to figure out how we can specify uh, the assets that we wanna actually take these positions in. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna rank it each week uh, from one to the number of securities you have. And then that way you can choose, I wanna go long the top X amount and bottom uh, or short the bottom Y amount of securities. And in our case, we're just going to go long the top two, short the bottom two. But first, we're going to need to create a ranked data frame, which is just going to be ranked across now. And it's not the columns, it's the rows. So we're going to use axis equals one here. Okay. And let's make sure we know which way it's ranking. Okay. So it looks like it properly did it across the rows. So the highest rank of nine is gonna to correspond to the highest return. And the one should be the lowest return. Okay, looks good. So uh, in our case, like I said, we're just gonna take the top two best performing securities, go long those for the next week, and we're gonna short the lowest performing one. So we want to then just take this data frame and change it to the signals that should actually be traded. So we're just going to set all of the 8s and 9s to 1. We're going to set all of the 1s and 2s to negative 1. And we're going to set everything else to 0. And you can do this a variety of ways. Uh, but to highlight uh, the, the np.where function, which is something very useful, I'm going to just iterate through the columns and do it that way. Okay, so I'm going to go through each of the columns and then I'm going to use this mpware.function where you can put in a condition. So in this case, we're going to do that is greater than equal to 8. We're going to set that equal to a 1. Else, we're going to insert another mpware function for when it's less than or equal to 2, which is going to be a negative 1. And then finally, if neither of those conditions are met, it's going to get a 0. All right, let's see if that turned out like we expected. Yep, looks like each row has two negative ones and two ones everywhere here. Great, uh, so now we have the signals that we want to construct a portfolio with and then look at the returns. Uh, so we're gonna just multiply this data frame directly on top of the entry multiply uh, by the returns, right? So if it's a negative one, uh, which means we're short, if that return on for that following week was negative, uh, this would become positive. And likewise, if it was positive, we would lose money and it would be a negative return. And to do that, we're gonna use mp.multiply. So this is gonna be for f. Okay, 
So the zeros should all remain zeros, but here uh, we want to make sure that things are correct. So this could have been either a successful short or a successful long. Uh, let's just check. So XLF on 3.7 had a negative return. So that means our, our signal must have been negative 1. Let's make sure. Yep, it was negative 1. Things are good. It gets a positive return. All right. And so next now, we want to combine these into a portfolio return. And since we're not taking positions in uh, all of the securities, we're just going to sum across the rows and then divide by the number of securities that we're holding. Uh, if you did have positions in all of them, you could just average directly. Uh, but in our case, we only have four securities. So we're going to assume that we're uh, in investing an equal amount in each of the positions. So to do that, we're going to call this portfolio rets. Once again, we're going to have to specify the axis, which we want to do row-wise, so it's going to be 1. All right, so now this should be our portfolio will return. Uh, we can do a quick sanity check once again by just looking at the day of 3.7 and making sure that at least the average looks somewhat close to that. All right, so we have a large positive, medium negative, large positive, pretty large positive. Yep, seems reasonable that that's the average. Cool. Uh, now we can go ahead and I mean just plot these results. Oops. Uh, so these are the daily returns, but we're interested in plotting the cumulative returns. Um, but the, the daily returns look look reasonable there. Um, so to do the cumulative returns, we're just going to use this formula. So this is just. Uh, using the sum of the logs. Cool. And there's our cumulative return. So it didn't look like it performed very well, uh, but it seems seems like it was correctly calculated. Uh, the scale looks fine. Um, it's not too ridiculous. And so uh, this would be the process you'd go through if you wanted to just test like this very simple idea here. and. So this isn't really getting into the more machine learning aspect of it, where we would actually assign labels to this and uh, labels to each of the movements, right? So uh, if you wanted to find, you know, three percent moves or greater, should be labeled one, um, and you know, negative two percent or less should be negative negative one. There's a lot of work that goes into how to properly label the data and uh, the returns to then train a machine learning classifier on, which you can do. Uh, but this is just a good starting point to where the holding period's already set because in those other cases it becomes a little more complicated when uh, you're not entering and exiting all your positions on a single day of the week. Uh, you have different time periods on that. Uh, so this is just a good starting place. And But what it doesn't do though at all is we're not looking at uh, how this actually performs out of sample, right? So I mean I can run a bunch of these and for a variety of different parameters and probably find a good one. I mean I could just write a for loop that goes over all these different momentum uh, lookbacks, and I probably could create an awesome looking back test. But as we know, that, that that's not really reliable, and it's really easy to find false positives. So uh, possibly in future videos, what we'll do is actually look at some more of the new advanced techniques used to uh, ensure um, solid out of sample performance, which are things like combinatorial purge cross validation, which actually has the ability to create multiple back test paths, uh, all, all using out of sample pieces. Um, from a classifier, 
uh, which is really, really innovative and something that definitely helps um, as even compared to just a traditional, uh, let's hold, you know, 2010 to 2016 in sample and then 16 to present out of sample. But uh, this also is just nice to just quickly look at the data and maybe see if you have any ideas that then you could go take to a more rigorous approach. Uh, so if you are interested in uh, going through something uh, more advanced where we actually a label all of the movements and so it's not cross-sectional in that sense uh, but you could generate the labels also cross-sectional and then be use a machine learning classifier to train on those data sets and to predict and create a out of sample uh, path uh, we can do that in the future videos um, but I thought this would be a good place to start so I hope you enjoyed this and if you have any questions uh, please feel free to reach out drop a comment and I'll, I'll see you in the next video